Hey there everybody, I'm Trace Dominguez and you are watching Test 2 Plus. It's a show where we go for a whole week breaking down a giant science topic into way smaller science topics. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I don't have a script, but I do have notes here on my computer. And this week, we're gonna sniff out the deepest corners of our senses. What are they capable of? You know, the five senses, and seeing and tasting and smelling and hearing and touching. But those are the senses, right? So what are senses? A sense, according to the dictionary, is a faculty by which the body perceives an external stimulus. One of the faculties of sight, smell, hearing, taste, and touch, as we just ran through. It basically helps you to perceive and understand the world around you. It's a way for your body to gather information. And often, people who are born blind, they don't feel like they need to see. People who are born deaf don't necessarily need to hear. They can feel the world around them just fine using their other four senses, because as many of us know, we compensate when we lose a sense or if we're born without it. But if you have these five senses, and this is how we're experiencing the world around us, it seems kind of limiting, doesn't it? Five senses doesn't sound like that many. Uh, if an alien came up to you and said, wow, you don't have this sense that I have, you know, whatever it may be, do you feel like you'd be missing it? You'd probably say, no, I feel fine. I'm experiencing the world in, in, in a very rich way. But the reality is we don't actually just have five senses. We don't. That five sense thing is a way to teach children how to explore the world around them using their bodies. It's, it's very difficult to understand what, how to use your body when you're a baby. You can't necessarily understand the world around you in a conceptual way. So this idea of having five senses is more constructive than instructive. The idea is to build up what your senses are. So let's kind of break them down a little bit, or at least one of them. When you think of eyesight alone, you've got color, you've got movement, you have to understand so many different things to really break down just the one sense. And technically, being able to see is actually two senses, because inside of your eyeballs are rods and cones. Rods sense brightness, and cones sense color. And when it comes to sensing color, you can break that down even further. We normally do that with primary colors when we're teaching children about their senses. But primary colors isn't really an accurate way to describe color, if you think about it. If you were to go over to your friend and talk to them about the primary colors, they would be completely confused because red, yellow, and blue being primary only makes sense for painting and coloring. It doesn't make any sense. You can't use that to describe the world around you very well. Printers use completely different color experiences than the primary colors. They use cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, or black. That's what your inkjet printer at home uses. Those ink cartridges are cyan, magenta, yellow, and key. Because when you print things out, that's the way to use the least number of colors to make the most accurate printed product. In light, they don't use those primary colors. They're using uh, blue, green, and red. And when mixed together, they make white light, and the absence of which makes black light. All of these things are the primary colors of different mediums, but we're taught that the primary colors in general, all primary colors are red, yellow, blue. Our eyes don't even use red, yellow, blue. They're using those primary colors of light. We're considered trichromatic because we see in those three colors. So monitors and TVs, they all use RGB pixels. That's what the RGB means on your computer. That is super complex, and that's just sight. That's just sight. That's just one aspect of sight. So when we look at the senses, you have to think of how, what they're really there for. So sight is actually there absorbing light, understanding motion, and being able to experience the world around you visually. Sound is detecting air vibration. That's the air vibrations of the world around you, as opposed to sight is absorbing the light of the world around you. Touch is detecting the physical contact of the world around you. Smell is just picking up volatile chemicals in the air around you. And all of these are fairly well understood, even by animals. Lower order animals use all of these things to understand the world around them. Taste, I think, is very interesting because it was actually evolved as a chemical process to decide if food was poisonous or rotten, and whether it's good or bad for you. 
We've kind of altered that today and engineered our food to fit the taste buds we have. So it's all about pleasure. So we experience food not so much as a way to tell if something's poisonous, but rather if it's something delicious. For example, umami, which is the taste of deliciousness, and that was only discovered fairly recently. It's the fifth sense on your tongue, if you will. So with all of these different senses, grabbing them and kind of pushing them into five basic senses seems really limiting. And that's because it is. There are way more senses than all of that. What are those other senses, though? That's the question. For more on that, subscribe now because we're going to have that episode tomorrow. And if you're itching to learn more about stuff, that's a, that's a hint, it's a sense hint, then click this right now. You can see our episodes from last week all about sleep. Thanks for watching Test 2. I'm Trace. We'll see you tomorrow.